A Disney World water park is finally reopening, characters are returning to Animal Kingdom, a ride closes soon in Disneyland, and Disney has released a rather questionable new piece of merchandise. Let's get you caught up on the latest Disney news right now. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Journey of Water has officially opened in Epcot and Disney World's water parks are playing another switcheroo on us. We've got some new snacks to review and a sneak peek at Disney's newest After Hours event. So let's jump right in. The newest attraction is now open in Epcot. October 16th marked the official opening date for Journey of Water and the new Moana meet and greet in Epcot. Both the attraction and the meet and greet soft opened a few days before that, but now they're officially open to everybody. Along with this new attraction opening, Disney released a new map for Epcot. Epcot, you're going to find Tafiti on the cover. And we also noticed that Swirled Showcase, one of the 100th anniversary booths added for the Epcot Food and Wine Festival, is listed as a brand new dining location. Now, Disney previously shared that these new booths would be sticking around for the Epcot International Festival of the Holidays, but none of the other booths got a permanent location on the map. So could this mean it'll be around for longer? Oh, we'll have to wait and see. Disney has announced that Blizzard Beach will reopen on November 6th. They've only been operating one of their water parks at a time, and currently hours for Typhoon Lagoon are no longer listed after November 5th. It seems the water parks will have another switcheroo this time around, but it hasn't officially been confirmed yet. New holiday snacks will be coming to Blizzard Beach when it reopens, including both s'mores and banana split churros. If you're visiting Animal Kingdom, you'll want to keep an eye out for some returned character meet and greets. First, we spotted someone in Dino Land, USA, near Triceratops Spin. Who's meeting there? The one and only Goofy. How However, if you want to meet Goofy at this spot, you may need to head there first thing in the morning. He's only available to meet through noon. And if you head towards the Discovery Island Bridge, you'll find Pocahontas. Pocahontas was out first thing in the morning too. She wasn't listed on the My Disney Experience app the day we saw her, so keep an eye out. Also, on some days, you might find Miko meeting here too. But when we were there, they were too busy eating berries to come and see us. A cast member also informed us that guests can spot Pocahontas on her special flotilla later in the afternoon, which is when her meet and greet will stop for the day. For the first time ever, Jollywood Nights is joining the lineup of holiday activities at Disney World. Hosted at Disney's Hollywood Studios, you'll be able to experience holiday-themed entertainment, special snacks, and more. Good Morning America shared all new concept art for the highly anticipated stage show at Theater of the Stars featuring the Muppets. We already knew that this show would be hosted by Kermit and Miss Piggy but now we can better envision what the vibe of the show is going to be. That's not all, though. They also highlighted an image that shows a sneak peek of the costumes that the characters will wear in the parks throughout the night. These are exclusive costumes to this event. And the first night of this new holiday party is coming up soon. If you want to see all the fun, be sure to follow us on social media at Disney Food Blog because we'll be there showing you everything. Indiana Jones Adventure in Disneyland Park is going to temporarily close starting on November 27th. The closure is currently scheduled to last at least through the end of November, but that's also as far out as the calendar goes at this time. The ride just had a rather lengthy closure from early January through mid-March earlier this year, so here's hoping Indy just needs a quick tune-up. All right, Swifties, are you ready for it? In celebration of one of our hottest pop culture icons of the moment, Everglazed in Disney Springs has released several new eras tour-inspired treats available for a limited time. We started with Everglazed's version, a purple uve iced donut hand-sprinkled with eras tour-inspired confetti and topped with pink buttercream, silver glitter, and a lucky number 13 edible disc. This was a classic Everglazed donut, soft and yeasty and sweet. We really like this, and it's a good choice if you're looking for a classic donut, but the flavors on top weren't that bold. You can snag this limited edition donut for $6.50. Now on to the coffee options. The specialty drinks include the Crystal Skies, a coconut cold brew with white chocolate foam and topped with pearl sprinkles, and the Brew of My Heart, a mocha Oreo cold brew with Oreo cold foam. Both are $6.95. And finally, they've got the Lavender Glaze Lemonade, which is a classic lemonade with lavender syrup for $5.50. For a more in-depth review, I've added the link to our article in the description below. Over in Epcot at the Mexico Pavilion, you can stop at two dining locations, San Angel Inn and Hacienda de San Angel, for some tasty Mexican food. Now, these two spots have great options for entrees, but today we're taking a look at one dessert that has made a comeback for the 100th anniversary. May we present the Templo Delicioso. This chocolate temple is filled with dulce de leche ice cream and served atop crispy churros, cajeta, and fresh seasonal fruit. Once you break into the chocolate, you'll find the creamy dulce de leche ice cream just waiting to be devoured. We might even say this outdoes the Fiesta Pyramid we saw for the 50th 
anniversary, but we are big fans of churros, so that might be biasing our opinion. This 100th anniversary Templo Delicioso costs $36 and could easily feed two or more people. You can find it at both restaurant locations and it'll be available until the end of 2024, so hurry to get yours soon. I know we talked about new Animal Kingdom food last week, but there's more. Over at Pongu Pongu in Pandora, you can grab the new cinnamon roll for $6.49. Just like other cinnamon rolls, it's several layers of rolled dough with cinnamon and sugar in between, and this one is topped with plain icing and sprinkles. Note that this is only available for breakfast, so after 10.30 a.m. you won't be able to get it. This one is massive, you certainly get your money's worth for the size, but unfortunately, we didn't love it. It's pretty dry. Not excessively so if you like the typical Mickey-shaped cinnamon rolls in Disney World. This is a similar situation, but enough that we didn't want to finish it. It's possible that we just got a bad batch this time, so maybe your experience will be better, but definitely wanted you to know what we thought. Cinnamon Cookie Popcorn is now available at Caramel Kusha in Epcot for $9.99. There's a nice cinnamon sugar flavor that's sweet and mild, and the cookie pieces add a little bit of crunch. But this is one of those pre-bagged varieties, and if you find yourself in Caramel Kusha, we'd encourage you to opt for the fresh caramel corn. Though if you're buying a gift for someone back home, this is a good addition to the pre-bagged lineup. Tune In Lounge, the bar connected to 50's Primetime Cafe in Hollywood Studios, has some brand new cocktails on the menu. The Indigo Hibiscus, made of Empress 1908 Gin, Bulls Blue Curacao Liqueur, of course, Minute Maid Premium Lemonade, Orgeat, which has that almond flavoring, Lemon and Hibiscus Grenadine, priced at $16. This one is the magical beacon cocktail from Disney World's 50th anniversary, rebranded without the glow cube. It's on the sweet side with some strong floral notes. And the Tune In PB&J cocktail made of screwball peanut butter whiskey, Bull's blackberry brandy, and Bailey's Irish cream liqueur topped with a maraschino cherry is $16. Now of course this one makes sense because they've got that famous PB&J milkshake here at 50's Primetime Cafe. Now this one's super heavy on the peanut butter whiskey which makes it real creamy and smooth. We felt this one was very balanced and had that just a hint of that blackberry flavor to give that PB&J vibe against the powerful peanut butter whiskey. This weekend only at Gideon's Bakehouse in Disney Springs, you can get an exclusive cookie to help out an animal rescue. Buying the Black Cat Cookie, which is a chocolate sugar cookie filled with chocolate cream cheese frosting rolled in crunchy black sugar crystals, means you're helping to support a local charity, the Liberation Cat House, which helps find homes for cats. It's only available through October 22nd. Energy Bites, that little kiosk by Tron in Magic Kingdom that keeps switching it up, has a new dessert. The Passion Fruit Isoform has ice cream mochi with citrus, shortbread crunch, and purple uve foam. The foam was fluffy but had no distinct flavor other than that classic sugary taste from Disney desserts. The texture was similar to whipped cream. The ice cream mochi was very sweet, like candy. You could taste that tart passion fruit flavor right when you bit into the mochi. The shortbread crumbs were a hit for our reporter, and she wished there were more crumbs to help add texture and balance the snack. It's $5.79 and worth a try if you like very sweet and fruity snacks. Gasparilla Island Grill at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort has a new cupcake for $7.99. This may look and sound a tad familiar to true Disney snack lovers, because we tried a not-so-poison apple cupcake a few years ago with similar flavors, but this guy is a little different. It's a chocolate cauldron filled with apple spice cake, apple filling, and caramel buttercream topped with apple mousse. From the creative decorations to the sweet, crisp flavor, we have no complaints on this one. It's a good fall dessert. Magic Kingdom has introduced the new Turkey Sandwich Kids Pack for $7.99. 79, you get sliced roasted turkey breast and cheddar on honey wheat bread with apple chips, cucumber, and grape tomatoes. It's labeled as a kid's pack, but since it's available at counter service restaurants, that means adults can get one too. You'll also find a ham and cheese sandwich option. Both varieties can currently be found at Pinocchio Village House and Cosmic Rays in Magic Kingdom. Everything in our pack tasted fresh, and the packaging allows you to close it up and save it for later. For $7.79, it's a pretty decent deal and could fill up a kid, if not an adult, for a light snack. Sci-Fi Dine-In Theater Restaurant in Disney's Hollywood Studios is an expert at storytelling, but it's not always known for having the best food in the park. Recently, the restaurant added some new eats to the menu, so we stopped by to see how they measured up. We got three of the new menu items, the Sci-Fi Impossible Nachos, the Bon Mi Burger, and the Feature Film Burger. The Sci-Fi Impossible Nachos are fried tortilla chips topped with plant-based black bean chili, avocado cream, pico de gallo, and cilantro. These are 13 bucks. We were shocked at how tasty they were. The 
meat was tender and flavorful and a bit spicy, and the texture was not quite similar enough to real meat that I would have been fooled, but it was pretty impressive. The Bon Mi Burger, which is $23, is a grilled house-made pork patty topped with roasted pork belly, pickled vegetables, cucumber, herbs, and sriracha aioli. This was a tender, juicy, and herbed patty topped with a delicious pork belly. The pork belly had a little bit of char and a great salty, almost bacony flavor. It was a bit fatty, but that's to be expected with pork belly, and it contributed to the depth of flavor. Last, the feature film burger for 25 bucks. This is an item that is regularly on the menu, but the ingredients change from time to time. Currently, it's a signature beef blend with house-made seasoning on a brioche bun with shaved pastrami, lettuce, heirloom tomato, and a Carolina mustard sauce. The burger was tender with a nice char from the grill on its edges and was well-seasoned with a noticeable garlicky flavor. It was a bit spicy in some bites, possibly from the pepper jack cheese. The mustard was sweet and very tangy. It paired really well with the savory, well-spiced pastrami. Now, the pastrami, which had notes of pepper and coriander, really made the burger pop. Head to our website if you want our full review on the Sci-Fi Dine-In, everything from atmosphere, price, and more. One of our favorite restaurants in Disney Springs has to be Chef Art Smith's Homecoming, so when we found out about some new menu items there, we made a reservation to check them out. Here's the thing, this restaurant rarely disappoints, and spoiler alert, this time was not different. We started with a new drink, the Hummingbird Cocktail, for 17 bucks, which is made with banana cream rum, vanilla bean rum, muddled pineapple, blueberry, and pineapple purees, and served with a Hummingbird Cake Pop. Overall, it's very smooth, and you can't really taste that alcohol in it. We also liked the cake pop. It was a nice touch for what it is, essentially a dessert drink. We will warn you, though, this is a very sweet drink, and we know some folks aren't into that. Also, mix it up real well, or the banana flavor overpowers everything else. We ordered the Strawberry Field Salad next for 21 bucks. It's made with crispy prosciutto and fresh burrata cheese, served on top of chopped romaine, mixed greens, strawberries, and red onion tossed in house-made maple balsamic dressing and drizzled with balsamic balsamic reduction. Okay, this salad was incredible. The burrata was so melty and creamy, and the balsamic was sweet, but also added a nice acidity to the overall flavor. The fruit on this was fresh and juicy and balanced out the acidity of the tomatoes. That crispy prosciutto added saltiness and a little bit of a crunchy texture. We also dug into Art's Hot Chicken Sandwich for 21 bucks. It's made with crispy fried chicken breast tossed in a buffalo-style hot sauce and dressed with tangy slaw, bread and butter pickles, and a drizzle of icebox dressing. The spicy is more of a Disney spicy, so not too much heat at all, but the acidity from the crispy slaw and the sweetness of the pickles cut that down. We would say that this sandwich is shareable if you're not super hungry. But we're not done yet. We also ordered the baby back ribs for 34 bucks. Yes, it was a big meal. <laughs> This is a full rack of ribs that is slow smoked for five hours and then basted in a house-made sweet and spicy barbecue sauce. It's served with fries and a broccoli and bacon salad. The ribs were juicy and tender and literally fell off the bone. The sauce though, it was such a great balance of sweet and savory, but if we'd had a choice, we'd order Art's famous fried chicken over the ribs. But if you're not in the mood for chicken, then this is a good one. Overall, everything we tried was excellent. We remember why we keep coming back to Homecoming time and again. They are usually spot on. The food here holds Holds up even when it's new and we will happily keep sampling more of it as new menu items get added. Iron Chef Masaharu Morimoto is hosting some special events at Morimoto Asia in Disney Springs this December. On Friday, December 1st and Saturday, December 2nd, Morimoto Asia is celebrating 100 years of House of Suntory Whiskey with a tasting event. Tickets are priced at $355 per person. And an exclusive momakase will be held later in the evening, beginning at 7 p.m. on both dates. During this event, 10 guests will enjoy a seven-course meal personally prepared by Chef Morimoto himself, paired with rare bottles from House of Suntory's signature whiskey collection. Ticketed guests will also be able to upgrade to a quarter ounce pour of Yamazaki 55 from one of the only 200 bottles in the world. This event starts at $2,000 per person, plus tax and gratuity. Lastly, that 12 Beers of Christmas event is coming back. It'll be held on Sunday, December 3rd, hosted by Chef Morimoto as well. Ticketed guests will be able to enjoy 12 beers paired with 12 bites to eat. For this event, non-alcoholic options will be available, so this is a family-friendly event. And there are two different time slots to choose from, either 11.30 a.m. or 2 p.m. Tickets start at $95 for adults and $55 for kids. And remember, this is one of those celebrity restaurants where the celebrity chef is rarely there, so this is kind of exciting to be able to see and interact with Iron Chef Morimoto. 
In the Emporium and Magic Kingdom, you can now purchase perhaps the ugliest Disney sweater we've ever seen. This very bright, vibrant castle and fireworks pattern might be the definition of an ugly Christmas sweater, but we suppose it can serve a definite purpose. There's no earthly way your family could lose you in Disney World if you're dressed in this. Jokes aside, this shirt does have a certain nostalgia quality to it, and if you're so inclined, you can get the adult version of the shirt for $39.99 and the matching kids shirt for $34.99. During a recent visit to Magic Kingdom, we spotted the Mickey and Minnie Mouse holiday ears in Fantasy Fair in Fantasyland. You can pick up a pair for $34.99. They're dressed to look like Mickey and Minnie are playing in a snowy forest. These ears are topped with a pink bow and they've got a sparkly silver headband. These are also available online. Shop Disney is offering a special discount for Disney World annual pass holders for a limited time. Through October 29, 2023, pass holders can get 25% off regularly priced merchandise. Some exclusions apply though. Sign into Shop Disney using your Disney account and enter promotion code WDW25. This discount will be applied to all eligible items in your bag. Maybe you need those holiday years. If you want to make sure you stay absolutely up to date on all things Disney news, sign up for our newsletter. It's 100% free and our newsletter friends are the first to get the latest info. The link to sign up is in the description box below. Thanks for listening everyone and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Vlog and we'll see you real soon.